All right, guys, so here's what's going on. Here's one of the blanks. This is a piece of tool steel. All right. It's not hardened at the moment. So what I do is I take this piece of tool steel. It's annealed. And I put it on a pin that I made. Now, if you guys can see, there we go. There's a bevel on this that I ground into this. This is hard steel. You can't scratch this with a file and stuff, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm using this as my holder. And what I do is I take the blank, I put it on, press it on until I get to the very edge so they're flat. And as I start rolling it, which I'll show you in a minute on the lathe, I don't even know if we can focus, but I had a couple people ask me how I'm turning the ends to fit the pins. So I'm going to show you quick. It's really not that hard. This is a tool steel right here, and I make these blanks to length, and I'm going to show you how I roll the end down to 8 millimeters so that the uh, pins don't come out. So it's really just this simple. It's a ball bearing on a little mount that I made. And what I do is you just roll it tighter and tighter and tighter. And as it goes around, it slowly shapes it. And then I'll set this like this. And we'll roll it again and set it again until it's flat. And it will meet that pin and take the form of it. So I'm going to roll this one and then I'll show you after what it looks like. Come on. So what it did is it took that form, this whole edge now is formed to match that pin as it slopes in and then it rolls over the front of it, if you can see it. So I essentially rolled this and pushed a ridge on the front. So that pin, when it's at this side, the other side, cannot go through that. So that's how I am doing the wrist pins. You slowly go around, 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 and around until it actually comes up over the lip here, even on this ground pin. And what happens is, if I can show you, you end up with a pin shaped like this. Or, I'm sorry, the spacer shaped like this. You can see it's got a lip, and this actual surface is actually rolled in too about uh, you can see the roll mark still so this one's unfinished so what I'll do is I'll put this in I'll polish it I'll make sure it's in the right dimensions because these are actually slightly bigger than um, 12 millimeter they're like 12.2 millimeter or something like that so I will actually do the final finish and the inside pretty close already because it got pushed out when I pressed these in so these are really snug right out of the box and what you do is you end up with something like this now this is an actual pin as you can see it can't go any further than where I actually rolled the edge so we're not even touching that lip that's like a fail safe but here's one that's been rolled and done. And as you can see, it's about two millimeters from the end because it can't go past the roll. So it essentially is a rolled clip inside the insert to hold the pin. Just like you would use your uh, clips and your piston pins. So I can slide this in and use a piston pin clip to make sure they can't walk out and that's it put the bearing on it and I will cut this to length but that's it right there in a nutshell folks so that is how I'm doing them now this is working great um, I actually talked to a guy that does uh, oh, he does like the top fuel bikes where they got like four cylinders in them that are just like gang bustered out on nitro and stuff and brass sleeves and all that crap but anyways he said when he was doing uh, some of the other modified builds that they do 
uh, to sneak in bigger pistons and stuff into the original ones. Um, you know, you, you gotta do stuff like this, you know. And he said that this actually worked really well. So I tried it, and after I roll it on the lathe, and I polish it all up, I put it back in, harden it, and this is like, you know, a file can't scratch this. So this is actually harder than the pin. So the pin's going to wear out before that little ridge ever will. So that is how I'm doing the pins now. I'm very pleased with it. This is like the best of everything so far. They're not exactly easy to make. But I have a setup now where I can put and repeat over and over again. So, anyways. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's where we're at. But a lot of people were asking how I'm doing the wrist pins and... This is how I'm going to do it. So this material is actually the same material this wrist pin's made out of. And if you ever tried to cut one of these, <clears throat> you, you know they're hard. I actually am using a, di a uh, carbide diamond chip uh, cutoff tool. And I just put it in and sh cut it over. And then just polish the end. So, But yeah, I'll take one, match the pin that comes. Find out where I got to cut it. And that's it. And I leave the two millimeter space. So I know exactly where to uh, put this. But that's how I'm making them. So I hope that clears it up. A lot of people were interested in it. No, it's not something you can just buy at the local hardware store and whatnot. I'm physically making each spacer. So anyways, alright.